So let me just say again, no greetings and welcome to all of you and um, happy new years to you. Um, if it's not too late to say that. Um, and it's a housekeeping, this meeting is being recorded and um, we'll ask persons to keep their mics muted. And of course, there will be two popular phrases or, or comments that will, will be echoed. Um, remember you're still muted or remember to unmute when you are going to speak, right? So, and then we are going to have our presenters share their story with us for just about seven minutes, right? And after which we're going to have the Q&A, right? So we'll hear all the presenters first, and then we'll have our questions and comment after, question and answers after, right? So, 2020, a big sigh. Every year we typically, every year typically has its own defining moments. But 2020 brought so much global changes that many of us never thought we would have reached the point where we are now. But here we are in 2021. With a pandemic still ranging, 2020 had waves of social changes swirling around the globe, local and international, um, general elections, storms, hurricanes, Wars, rumors of wars. We thought that it was would have been World War Three with America and Iran. Um, we have heard about so many superstars, um, quote unquote, because we are all human beings, and I think we are all stars. But um, we have heard about so many celebrities who have passed on in 2020, and so we we really and truly are grateful to be here at this very moment. You know, personally, I lost my father, um, and I'm going to say to 2020, you know, because um, 2020 seems like the, the world was going to end, um, in my opinion. Um, so I lost my father to 2020. Um, but, you know, when we think about it, 2020 brought some amount of opportunities as well, you know, which we will hear about from our presenters right and our panelists and 2020 also brought the birth to this committee luca because for some time now the library has planned or had the initiative um, to start this health and wellness um, committee and program and it really took flight in 2020 Right. So at this moment, I am going to just pause to say a big thank you to the committee members. Mrs. Wall Johnson, Miss Wall, Miss Johnston, Miss Ruth Rooms, and Mrs. Millwood. Thank you, ladies, because of you, Luco has been a very active committee within the library and I'll say on campus where we have started a number of initiatives, right? Some of which I'm sure you'll hear from our campus librarian a little later on. Um, but 2020 was not all that bad because we, we were able to use the negativity into creativity because we took on and adopted many of the challenges, many of the circumstances that were thrown at us and we turned it around to work in our favor and for the benefit of others, right? So we are here 2021 and I am grateful and I welcome you again um, for being here with us. Um, so I'm quite sure we are going to be in for a treat. In our usual and customary manner, it is always 
the right start, the right precedent to start off our proceedings with a word of prayer. And for this, we'll invite our very own committee member, Ms. Ruth Rooms, to lead us in prayers. And after Ms. Rooms, we're going to hear from our campus librarian who will bring us greetings. All right. A pleasant morning, everyone, and welcome to all. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for who you are. You are an amazing God. And the thing about you is that whatever it is that the devil means for evil, you always turn it into good to halt us any way in our destiny and we are grateful and so the devil is a loser with that we thank you for what we're going to be discussing today all the positives and some negatives but all the positives that came out irrespective of the pandemic in 2020 forgive us of our sins cleanse us from all unrighteousness god and allow us to have a productive time amongst each other. Let your name be glorified. We welcome you in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank amen. you. Okay. So, um, good morning to everybody. Morning. Good morning to all our colleagues in the library good morning to our those who are presenting or presenters those who are online who may not necessarily be members of the library community my very 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 best wishes to everybody for a blessed and productive and safe 2021 can't ever leave out that when we're talking about this time. Um, even though we are still in the, the mode of the pandemic, I want to say that I am grateful for the, the opportunity to reflect because this is what a new year does. It gives us an opportunity to reflect on where we have been and where we want to go. And it allows us to put in place um, with God's help our plans and how we can make things, things different and better. And I am very, very grateful to, to the, I, I said in my greetings yesterday to the staff, to the very energetic, I call them energetic, um, health and wellness team led by Mr. Heron for um, really allowing us to reflect on different aspects of our health and our wellness during last year. Um, and as he said earlier, you know, we had wanted to, to push a health and wellness team for maybe two years. I remember I asked him in one of our general staff meetings maybe in 2018, but it came to fruition last year and we are grateful. And, and I said energetic because for some of you who don't know, they are, they are Mr. Mr. Heron is the on-site um, trainer. He leads the, the library team in, in aerobics. And um, in addition to that, we have had a number of webinars, which I, I find that they, they have been so impactful. Um, most of us would have received different things from the different webinars. I think for me, the last one in which we had persons sharing about um, their cancer journeys was so powerful, so very powerful. And I really, really want to thank the team for organizing these various webinars. Today, uh, as we begin, and it's not too late, Mr. Heron, to say Happy New Year. It is not too late. We're just on the seventh day of 365 days. So 
um, it's not too late. It is still a new year. And I think it is good that we should really wish each other um, a, a blessed and happy new year. So as we are on this, this, this journey, this continuing journey of COVID, but a new journey because a new year gives us opportunity to, to start afresh. Um, I am grateful that we will hear some of the stories from last year and how 2020 impacted so many different persons. But I also want us to think about how we're going to make, and, and I'm talking to um, everybody, not just the library staff, how we're going to make this year um, impactful and how we're going to make it good. We have to decide. Sometimes we have to decide very, very early um, that this is how I want the year to go and how am I going to, to make it happen. Because as, as Ruth prayed, sometimes the enemy brings all sorts of um, negative things and God has a way of turning them around. But we have to see them. We have to see them for what they are. So there are many stories stories of last year in all, stories of opportunity, stories of triumph, stories of sadness, as Mr. Heron says, some people lost loved ones, but stories of gratitude, because a lot of people, including myself, we are, I am grateful for seeing another year. So there are many, many stories that we could, we could compile books, we could compile things about in the library as well, right? So I'm looking forward to the stories that we're going to hear um, from all of our presenters today. And so I want to say thanks to everybody. Thanks to Ms. Walker, Ms. Nelson, Mr. Fletcher, Mr. Sanderson, and Ms. Harrison. Thank you so much for agreeing to share with us. And thank you for your stories that will come. And I pray for all of us that this year will be a really blessed year. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kai. All right, and so um, as, you, as you have noted, um, you realize that our, the panelists uh, is across the, the sector, right? So, you know, because we have seen how negative and positive impact um, that 2020 has brought, right? And we're going to be singling out COVID-19 because that has been the major change and a major player in 2020, right? But um, it has brought a lot of opportunities as well, because um, even when you look at the university, um, wanted to go uh, to online learning and within COVID-19, within a couple of weeks or months, we were able to push most of the courses, if not all, online. And even individually, now we had to make adjustment as we had our children um, homeschool, right? And so it caused us to, to juggle and to multitask. And uh, many of us never thought or saw ourselves doing that, you know? But I am going to stop my talking because I have the persons here who will share their story. And that is why we are here, right? So our first speaker who will be sharing the story is our very own um, Mrs. Nelson. All right, so Mrs. Nelson, the floor is now yours. Good morning, everyone. Let me first start by saying life is filled with so much uncertainty. In a moment, our lives can take a sudden twist. Right now, we are living in a pandemic and are not sure if life will ever get back to the way we used to. Everything changes when you have to go through a serious health challenge. How did I cope in 2020? I've been gifted with a second chance at life. In the summer of 2019, I had a major stroke. The right side of my brain was damaged. 
I was unable to walk. My fine motor skills and balance were impaired, but the goodness of God brought me through. I was away from work for six months. A part of my rehabilitation and recovery was for me to get back as close as possible to where I was before the stroke. Returning to work was a milestone in my rehabilitation and recovery. It was a final hurdle in getting as close as possible to where I was before the stroke. My health condition was stable enough, so I returned to work January 2020. I was a bit apprehensive about returning to work as I was transitioning back into the workforce after being away from for some time. I was not sure how the stroke had affected my cognitive capacity and how much of my key functions I would remember. I also wondered if I would be able to work on entirely. The first month was very difficult as I tried to keep up with what was required of me. After the first month, I began to adjust nicely. Two months after I came back to work, Jamaica had its first COVID-19 case, which changed how we do things. I fall within the group that is most vulnerable to the COVID-19 virus. At first, it was a bit scary. However, I spoke to my doctor who told me the COVID-19 virus was going to be around for a while. At work, I do not necessarily interact with the general public or share a workspace. I only share common areas such as the restroom and lunchroom. It was determined that I would work three days in office and two days at home. My doctor was comfortable with the number of days I worked in office, but cautioned me that I must follow the protocol strictly. How I deal with COVID-19 as a stroke survivor. How I deal with COVID-19 as a stroke survivor, I already had my world turned upside down. I had to stay home for the greater part of six months, not being able to go anywhere. I was therefore equipped to deal with the challenges brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. So when the parish of St. Catherine went on lockdown last year, and citizens were not allowed to go out on certain days, this did not bother me. I had my trial run of a lockdown. The difference this time was that all my family members were at home. The stroke has made me stronger and resilient. What I do though, is to limit my consumption of the news. I do not follow every single press conference or the daily statistics. I recognize that if I do so, I would be consumed by fear and anxiety. I can't allow myself to be consumed by fear and anxiety. These are not good for my physical and emotional well-being. I'm still affected by the residual effects of a stroke. I'm working on fully regaining my strength and coordination. I continue to do activities to help me improve my strength, balance, and, and endurance. I go walking in my community. Walking is helping my physical recovery. For my community, I can see the ocean, so the fresh air and nature lift my mood. I do things to engage my brain. I play the word game, wordscape, and I write. I also listen to inspirational sermons and music. I still can't do simple tasks, like eating with a knife and fork, pouring my ear. Sometimes things fall out of my hand, and I avoid difficult driving conditions, like driving during peak hour. The impairment that is not quite visible to everyone is fatigue. I get tired easily and have to remind myself 
to slow down. I, however, do not allow myself to focus on my limitation and what I can do. Each new day inspires me to be grateful for each new day and every breath I take. I release my fears into God's hands. It is God who has brought me this far and I trust him to lead me all the way. I have learned not to take the simple things in life for granted, like the ability to just get up and go where I want. Brushing close to death and going through recovery made me realize how fragile life is. Someone once said, destiny is not created by the shoes we wear, but the steps we take. Let's make the journey of life meaningful and memorable. Let's be, let's be kind to one another as we walk this way of life. In closing, COVID-19 is no joke. Let us do everything we possibly can to keep safe. Thank you for allowing me to share my story. Wow. Oh, thank you, Ms. Nelson. Mrs. Nelson. I, I tell you because um, we, some of us might be aware of your story, but um, the depth of it, um, I must say that we, we were not aware of. And these are, these are the things that we talk about um, and try to promote um, in the library. You know, make sure that persons be respectful of others because you just don't know what the other person is facing. You just don't know what the other person is going through. So, you know, um, we were sharing, um, Dr. Sam, Ms. Nurse Saunders, uh, you're welcome, nurse. Um, we were sharing Nurse Saunders and I just earlier um, about the simple things that people just need to do to slow the spread of COVID-19 because I might feel healthy and strong and stand feel like, okay, well, I'm good, you know, but are we thinking about others? And which is what 2020 has brought, you know, for us to be considerate to others, you know? So thank you, Ms. Nelson. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll have some questions coming up um, after all the presenters. And so at this moment, we'll turn to Nurse Saunders. Um, to share with us. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning to my fellow panelists, um, to the UBI Library Committee, and everyone else who have joined the, the, this discussion. Um, 2020, COVID-19, <laughs> some, some experiences and um, a very very mixed year for for me you know um i entered the year being a, a new nurse uh, at, at the university hospital of the west indies currently in orientation when when 2020 came in shortly after that then you know i believe it was january going into february hearing talks about covid 19 and it being in china and what's happening over there then by the end of February, you know, I'm hearing that you know, I'm selected. I'm told I'm selected to be a part of, um, you know, a team of nurses to care for COVID-19 patients. And at that time, I'm like, wow, um, I'm a new nurse. I'm thinking all kind of stuff. Um, so I was, it was kind of, uh, uh, what should I say? I wasn't really into it at, at the beginning, but after thinking about it, you know, knowing that these persons would need my my uh, expertise and my professional care, and you know, I'll be helping them to as much as possible be in a in a better position, or bring back to where they where they were previously. You know, my mind changed. I got excited. I wanted to. You know, experience all that provide care, and then there was a positive case 
So very shortly after completing orientation, I moved to Leeds. You know, I am in the, the position of, of caring for COVID-19 positive patients. It was, well, first, first of all, after, after meeting the first set of patients, I think we had patient one to patient three at the time. And at that time, I, I was shocked. I, I didn't, I, I found out that you can have COVID-19 and you're like perfectly fine. You may have um, a fever, a little cough and, and so forth. You're, you're not in a critical or dying position. And I was like, whoa, you know, and the, the, the um, patients there, they were very cooperative and um, that was a good, good, good experience. But outside of that though, you know, it's an area where you have to take the necessary um, PPE measures. So the first day of work, you know, I was there trying to recall exactly how the, the procedure was in terms of donning your, your PPEs and, and doffing the PPEs, you know, and they, well, there were guidelines there to, to help in that. So you're like checking yourself as you go along, attending to patients, you know, you have to be um, like watching yourself. You have to be um, conscious of what, what you're doing checking if you, you might have a, a breach in, in your seal and everything, your mask. So, you know, you have to provide care, but in the meantime, you're still checking, checking yourself. And eventually it got, it got better. You, you, you know, I got more comfortable in, in what I'm doing, you know, know that I, I am just properly, everything is going well. And um, the, the time where things got very, very difficult, very difficult. You have persons presenting with um, severe respiratory um, problems. You know, they, they can't breathe by themselves. They need oxygen. They can't help themselves. And you're in there trying to do, well, do your best as possible to, to bring them um, to a more stable and um, better position. So outside of patient care, um, my whole persona changed when COVID-19 arrived in terms of taking taxi, you know, shopping, you know, going out. That is something that I, I didn't do much of it prior to COVID-19 and when COVID-19 came, it, like it killed me. All the little that I used to do. You know, it wasn't a thing for me anymore. But wearing a mask and, and being socially distanced from distant from persons, that is something I took seriously. You know, I, I, I was puzzled when I, I venture on the road and see crowds of persons gathering, you see a line and you're wondering what is happening there? No one is obeying the, the markers or even a hand length apart. That is not there. And I mean, I, I was puzzled. I was, I was kind of vexed, you know, to, to see that persons are just not complying to, to what needs to, to be done. Um, but I, I couldn't help, I, I know, but... Um, I just had to pray about about the situation, you know. Um, or back to to patient care. Really. The, this virus made me realize that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are from, you know what what you do, you can you can catch it, um, and it it can be very lethal very lethal in you're here today talking you know as a patient I'm, I'm, I'm you know 
talking about what they experience. You will see persons talking fine, and I mean they're ox they're unoxygenous and, and so on. But in the midst of that, in in, in the blink of an eye, they can no longer be be here. That's how lethal this is. And in my mind, I'm saying, oh my, if, 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 look, you have persons who are suffering, and yet persons are out there up and about doing whatever they like. If only they could see what are happening or what can happen with this thing, then they would change their entire perception, change how they behave. Um, you know, but uh, such they cannot have such thing being shown to the entire world, but only if they, they could see, you know. Um, but there, there have been good times as well, and, and the unit, you, you see where persons recover with a big smile on their face, you know, they recover and they go home, back to their families, and they're like, this is awesome. I was a part of this process, you know, and it, it made me feel, great you know um to see them leave in a in a better position or back to where they were um, but as as it really is stressful as i said it, it got stressful sometimes um i had to try to take my mind off work you know nowadays you know i'm, I'm a technology guy so on the social media just to keep my mind at work, get relaxed, you know, have some fun, you know, talk to my relatives, family. Um, the, the, the traveling, as I mentioned, taking taxi wasn't my thing. My immediate family is not, not where I am. They are parishes away, they are in the, the south, uh, west of the island, so I didn't see them for about a year because I, I decided I'm not going to take any public transportation. Knowing how Jamaicans, taxi or bus operators are, that the cars are packed and the bus are packed. And I would not be a part of that. I'm saying if I'm working in a unit and I haven't contracted the virus, I would, I, it would destroy me mentally to go out on the road and, and, and contract the virus. So I, I didn't take any public transportation. Um, how I actually visited my parents or my immediate family was, you know, via Natural Express. Where to me, that was a more safer route, you know. Um, it took me a while to visit them, but it actually drew me closer to my family. I've gotten closer to my family this year because, you know, um, the idea of losing them, you know, it, it, it pondered, I pondered on it and it, it, it hit me harder than any time before, you know, so I, I got close with them. That is one thing I can look back at and say this year has done this for me and um, but um, I'm happy about that. You know, um, that's that's pretty much um, my my experiences throughout the year. Um, I, I well, questions and answers probably can get some more out of me. But uh, as for now, uh, that's pretty much my story of the year 2020 and uh, COVID-19. Thank you, Nurse Saunders, um, because um, you, you have raised a number of interesting pointers because one in particular, I remember um, the Ministry of Health himself um, had to come out and ask persons, especially the taxi drivers, to stop discriminating against the nurses, you know, the, the very persons who are tending to our needs um, can't go home when, when the work is done. Um, so I know um, based on that story, it must have been very frightening. And as you rightly said, you know, um, avoiding the public transportation because, you know, um, us as Jamaicans, sometimes just 
take things so granted um so easily we just like we're so naive about it um we just really don't care um and so i'm glad that you as someone who, who was in the, the first hand experience of covid19 um who have seen the impact of it and all those persons who are asystematic um you know you just don't know you just don't know you know so we we definitely will have to take the next this damn last year had me thinking a lot thinking hard about all my own people at yes. um, this point in, in my career and i'm not far in my career it's challenging to own a vehicle and i was thinking hard about that you know because i wanted to avoid the whole public transportation system right sure. all right well thank you again but no all right so we are going to school um it's it's 2021 so we i was going to say to get your pens and paper for notes taken but 2021 who needs paper and pen right we can save thousands of trees by using our electronic devices All right so mrs harrison um you were going to tell us your story as a school teacher high school teacher all right yes thank you mr heron good day everyone my name is kimon harrison and i'm a high school mathematics teacher and for me i would summarize my experiences in 2020 due to the pandemic as uncharted waters now i'm not necessarily referring to my online classes as uncharted waters because the whole idea of online classes and creating virtual classrooms they weren't new to me right but it was the experience of teaching my students and knowing that i was being restricted from coming in contact with them that phenomenon was new for me and it was new for them as well now everything about the pandemic was uncharted territory as i said before and we're being instructed and directed about the disease by experts who you know in my opinion were admitting to us at the same time that they were still learning about the virus and then they hit us with this the biggest shock of it all for me that we were being told to physically distance ourselves from each other and i don't know about y'all but i was not prepared for that at all I can do a week or two without going out and seeing someone. I mean, I can even, I even need a month or two during the summer, you know, to get a break from my students. Short periods I could handle. But after months of just being at home and only having virtual sessions with my students, I was over it. I wanted school to be opened. I, want, I, want, I even wanted to send out my own children to school so that they could go and interact with their friends. I wanted to go out every day, go to work, see my coworkers. I, I even wanted to see some of my students, some of my students who I missed dearly, I wanted to see them. I just wanted normalcy back to my life, right? Now, let me just quickly say that I'm not really a techie person, but um, I, I can't really, deal with technology too much. As a matter of fact, my friends in the past would have joked that when it comes on to devices, I've destroyed many phones, I've wrecked my laptops many a times, and trust me, that happened to me last year. But none of that I made that, I didn't make any of that dark me because I could manage the online classes. I have done online courses before. I have worked with IT persons in terms of creating online modules and so forth like that. You know, all with the, the notion that if students were missing anything, they were absent from school, they were able to have this platform to obtain any course content and so on. So, you know, in some sort of way, I thought that I would have been prepared for this virtual school. And the concept and the idea of online classes in my mind has its place. And, you know, the education sector does need it in relation to being there with technology. And I know it's something that the sector itself would have wanted, but somehow we weren't ready for this. And I know we've heard the, the testimony of students, parents, teachers, administrators, both here in Jamaica, internationally. And I know we would agree that 
we definitely weren't prepared for this extreme mode of everybody staying home, of everybody being online at once. I know even the internet providers wasn't prepared at all for the volume of persons being online at the same time and so on. But that part or that aspect of 2020 with online learning for me wasn't too daunting. The issues with virtual learning were many, yes, uh, but combined with the pandemic, the major difficulty was the great sense of isolation that basically came with online learning. The, the new protocols created, sorry, the new protocols required us to stay six feet apart from each other. It discouraged us from gathering in large groups. And if you know anything about the public schools here in Jamaica, then you'll definitely understand why our schools had to be closed in order to uphold these protocols, right? And unfortunately, another issue that came from this is the fact that our students would lose the socialization aspect of the teaching and learning process, right? They have been accustomed to this throughout the years. We've been indoctrinating them um, with the idea that they needed to work together and play together from the inception of their school life. And then, you know, three months into 2020, we were now saying to them that their physical interactions with each other would be restricted, that they would have to give up some of their freedoms while, you know, the scientists figured out this whole viral. And the worst thing is that on top of that, we were telling them that they needed to still take responsibility for their own learning amidst the fears of the, the pandemic itself. Like I said, it was uncharted waters. It was a lot for me to deal with. It was a lot for my students to deal with. And even thinking about as a parent, as a mother being home with my own children, it was a lot for me to handle both my school children as well as my children that were here at home. But in regards to my students, you know, despite the, the device issues that they had, the internet problems and even the regular power cuts, there were students who were dealing with other issues, social anxiety, depression, loneliness. You know, there were students who were present online for classes. They wouldn't miss any other sessions. If you spoke to them at the end of the day, they would just break down. There would be parents also who would call. They would call early in the mornings, in the nights, over the weekend. They, they just needed some help, some suggestions on how to deal with the emotional issues that their children were facing. I mean, I, I, I could not deal with this. I honestly had to reach out to the chaplain and the guidance counselors at my school a few times for their assistance. As honestly, I only did one college psychology course and it did not sufficiently prepare me for this at all. It did not prepare me for this uncharted waters that I was wading in for months now and I needed help. So yes, they'd get the help. They'd kind of take the summertime to recoup, to come back again. And starting the new school year online in September, October, I had to revise our lesson plans. I had to take in consideration that on some days that I wouldn't be teaching any math concepts to my students. Some sessions, we just talked, we relaxed our minds, and we even took some time to meditate on the word of God. It was all necessary some days. Right. I honestly spent most of my sessions in 2020, you know, encouraging students that we would get through this together than actually teaching them math. I wasn't too concerned with whether my classes were behind. I was more focused on ensuring that everyone was in good spirits. Because trust me, whenever my students were struggling with an issue, it affected me emotionally as well. If they cried, then I cried. My students know that I'm an emotional person. If they laugh, then all is well. I will be laughing along with them. And trust me, there were days that we were just not going to be doing any math work. We were just going to be there for each other. And I had to tell myself that, you know what? Whenever they were ready to learn, that's when I was ready to teach. So ladies and gentlemen, that's basically it. That, that, that was my story. That's my experience. That was my uncharted waters for 2020. I thank you for listening. Yes, and, and thank you, Mrs. Harrison, because um, what, what, what the world, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to single out Jamaica, what the world needed in 2020 was more togetherness, 
yep. um, more, more affection, um, you know, because as I said, there are so many, so many rumors of wars that are around the place and even our children needed to be loved. And with COVID-19, we are now being forced not to, um, to huggy huggy and to touchy touchy and okay. you know you know that that I can only imagine what it would have been like for the children you know because um, they needed socialization right okay. so many persons might think that you know going to school is just to take what copy what is on the blackboard but the whole aspect of it is being able to physically run up and down and to socialize with their peers you know so um later on in the q a um, i'd like to hear from you as it regards to the curriculum because you know um okay. as you said you had to rethink and redo your 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 classroom lessons you know so i'd like to hear from you later on um about the curriculum you know so thank you very much for sharing yeah and uh, up next, you know, we we have our musician, our artist, um, Mr. Fletcher. I think um, the the music industry has suffered somewhat of a major blow um, with the hotel industry um, coming to a an halt and um, no major gathering. How 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 has it been for you, uh, Mr. Fletcher? Well. For me, first, we really good day, everyone. Uh, very grateful to be here to share my experience of from last year until present. You know. um, it's been a tough one. However, as I said, life prevailed. I have to live through it. And uh, then my tenor tells, once we live alive, we give God thanks, and we have to do what we have to do. And see, you know, in another year, 2021, however, going back to 2020, my last tour as a musician um, was with Albert Rosi, because I'm, I'm, Albert Rosi is an Italian artist who lives in Jamaica, he's band leader, musical director. And we did a tour of the US for four weeks, and towards the latter part of March, we're hearing about COVID, and then coming back to Jamaica, I should have gone back again in June you know, touring Europe, what we normally do, touring the US. But of course, you get it more and more, that COVID is here, and the world is just getting bigger, 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 and bigger, and bigger. However, the reality of the situation is that uh, touring, you have to have an audience. And we've had like a live audience. We tour here, there, I've toured with Shaggy in the past for a couple of years as well. We've had audiences around the globe and all of that. But the reality is, even with him, things have majorly changed. I've done work with him since being in Jamaica. You know, like I did his Christmas special in December, going Shaggy and all that. But the reality is, with a lot of artists, production is where it is at home. Because there's no more touring, trying to stop. The reality is, you can't say you're going to leave here to go into the US or Europe on a tour. Because the promoters have stopped booking, uh, all the concert venues are closed. Everything shut down because the right is is gathering, and it's just been a chain reaction in terms of here you now. Not being able to travel, then you have to turn to Plan B, because the right is a touring musician doesn't get paid monthly like a nine to five worker. Touring musicians basically, when you work, that's when you get paid. When you don't work, you're pretty much on your own. But persons um, that love to go to concerts, love to want to see this artist, see that artist, wherever. it's not only in our reggae genre, it's global. No matter what type of artist you are, musician or producer, everybody's experiencing it because it's, it's, a, it's a chain effect. It's a ripple effect right across the whole entire globe. Um, for me now, not being able to travel because of no shows. Well, what I've been doing is like turning to like some part-time teaching. I've been doing some studio production like with Dean Fraser, working on his album. We just mentioned having Christmas. I did some stuff with Shaggy also. 
and this also appeals to the algorithm. But um, the ones who I feel it more so is for like the younger musicians. Some of them who have just graduated from Edna Manley College left out. Some of them trying in their early 20s trying to say, yeah, man, I'm going to go on and get it. But here, here's a full stop. Say, you're not going nowhere. You're back here in Jamaica. Do what has to be done here. So I know a lot of persons have returned to alternative careers. Maybe what was their hobby is not their full-time career. And having to, 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 to do something with yourself differently, I, I don't think nothing for, for granted. Um, no time soon. I don't see those opening up for any type of touring. What is happening now is virtual shows. So basically, you're in a room, you, you set up the stage like you're in front of an audience, and you're in front of two, two cameras, three, sometimes just one, and you better perform like it's an audience there. There's no audience there. That would be Reggae Song Fest, uh, Reggae Song Splash, and a couple of other things. So basically, what I call it is if you watch TVJ on a Wednesday morning, where you've seen some live artists perform with their bands. I call it a bigger version of a TV chain performance. That's the reality of it. No. The key thing is, is there any, any income from the virtual shows? None. So far. <laughs> Sometimes they have to be dependent on sponsors. The sponsors only can do so much or no more. I don't personally that a lot of artists are feeling it. It's not an easy road. Um, is there, is, there, is there an answer for it? No. As he says, everybody has come together now. It's, it's a balance right across the border. If you're rich, you're poor, black, white, brown, COVID has, doesn't discriminate. So talking about the music industry, the only thing you can do is just look out for the virtual shows, if there are any, and turn on your radio, continue listening to your radio, watch TV, watch the internet and see what's happening. But really and truly, um, it's a major heart. We're hoping, hoping that something will eventually turn and change, but it's easier said than done. It's way easier said than done. And I don't see nothing changing for now. I mean, I've been doing production in the studio with some persons here, there are persons who send their tracks from abroad and I'll do some recordings and all that stuff. But we have to remember where we are in the island of Jamaica. It's only so much you can get done and no more musically speaking. Once again, as I say, a lot of musicians and artists have been turned to do other alternative things. Because shows can bring no income. There's no audience. So and that alone is gathering. That's why it's like, oh, so it's, it's, it's a tough road, but alternative method is, and you know the thing is, it's the only way out right now. And not even so to some other musicians that I know is still tough, because a lot of them are not very, I mean, I have a wife here who's a, who's a, who's a trust me, she's my, uh, my, my, my wall, my tallest friend. And you know, it just goes to show that we have to balance it. You know, she's nine to five, I am not. But the reality is, um, when she met me, she knew what my job was, my job function. Touring a lot with Shaggy globally. Then from there, juggling with Freddie McGregor, Jack Hura, you know, with personally with Abba Rosie. But the thing is now, it just took a sudden turn. <laughs> Just like that, no warning, there's no manuscript, there's no, there's no leaflet, nothing to say, oh, musicians, guess what? You're not gonna go on this street because COVID is here. No, COVID is the bigger boss, right? And it's tough, but I know the reality is not only music, but persons who don't have an five, you have to look at other alternative methods of getting an income one way or the other. But as I say, I believe that, what was your hobby? If that can be your, your main source of income for some at all, then some, you know, sometimes you have to go back to school, do something else, and just, just, just find something else to do. But right now, there's no formula for the music industry. There's not. 
No, the, the, the richest of an artist, there's no formula, nothing. Until we get rid of the COVID, until it goes, but it's easier said than done. So there are no virtual shows for everybody, that's it. Pretty much. Oh, it sounds, sounds like a very tough one. It is. Uh, right. Yes, and and and, and, and 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 I can hear throughout this session, you know, um, just as you have said, um, what it was, your hobby is now your min. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the harsh thing. Remember, I just said, I guess what? You still have to pay your bills. You have to go to JPS, you have to go to Water Commission, you have to go to the supermarket. No, I have my two boys in there doing online schooling, and my, my six children and my 30 year old, and are they on, in there right now doing online schooling? Uh, so you still have to be paid? <laughs> still have to. All right, Mr. Fletcher, thank you very much. Sir. Uh, but, um, I, I can imagine um, touring with Shaggy. Oh, my. Oh, you mean Grammy, Grammy Award winning RIT? Oh, and I'm going on the tour, and then 2020 here, I can't go anywhere. Oh, no, that's not that's not that's 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 some serious realignment. Um, yeah. uh, Look into yourself. <laughs> Readjustments. Yeah. Right, um, right. So, so that was very, very, that was very, very interesting um, to see. Um, but I may use this opportunity just to invite persons or to remind persons that um, after the Palenists has shared their story. Um, you can you have the opportunity to shoot your questions um, to them or to questions to them, right? So we invite you to to share. Even if you have your a story that you want to share with us, we will invite you to share with us briefly your story, right? And um, that leads us into our next um, presenter, right? who is going to paint for us um, a new picture. And um, Ms. Walker, I am deliberately using that word, right? Um, you will paint for us a new picture, right? What, 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 what's your story like? Good, good afternoon, um, Tamar. And thanks for having me again. Well, my story is, um, I'm glad to say a little bit more positive. Um, despite the challenges of COVID-19, uh, and there are a lot of challenges, and I am in the vulnerable group, so for me it was a bit of a, a, a matter, you know, just breathing the air and <laughs> that you think somebody who had COVID may have breathed. But um, my story began in February, the second last um, Saturday in February, when my elder daughter, Chloe, she invited me to do a paint and sip with my other daughter. And she went online, um, YouTube, and pull up this sunflower. I had not painted since secondary school. Uh, I, I can't even remember painting in secondary school, but I believe I must have because it would have been part of the curriculum. And we did have an art teacher who I remember. So <laughs> we painted a sunflower and that sunflower took me the whole night into the four day morning. And then when I got up the morning, I still wasn't um, comfortable with the outcome. So I start painting again. So my daughters, they got up and they were like, mommy, seriously, <laughs> you, you still painted? But at the end of it, which was like midday, the sun, the, the painting didn't look half bad, you know? So I took it to work, I show it off, I put it in my office, it is still there. And, you know, the people who saw it said, well, you paint that, you know, that, that ain't looking too bad, Andrea. But then I put that on the back burner. And then came COVID-19. 
March, so be a row March, then March, Island shut down, university shut down. We home and we are working remotely and I have all of this time that I would normally spend going to work, getting back from work, doing this, doing that, and you can't do it anymore. So again, my elder daughter, she says, well, if you're looking for something to do, you know, I still have um, some canvases and paints from my paint and sip because her birthday was February the 9th. And she did, um, she was 29, so she did a 29 wine paint and sip. So she had all these paints and brushes and canvases and so on. So she said, well, let's do another paint and sip. And this time we did, um, she went online and she pulled up this African sunset with a giraffe in the background. And the joke is that my painting looked half decent because my painting is eight paintings in one. Because I just paint, and when it was not going my way, I paint over, I paint over, I paint over. It took me possibly about two days to get it to my liking. And that started me. So every day I fell in love with this thing, and every day I would get up, you know. I, I, I no longer went to sleep at 8 or 9 o'clock, which I used to. I was not going to sleep at 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock. And then 5 o'clock in the morning, 4.30, 5 o'clock, I back up and I paint it because I want to paint before my work start and I want to paint after it. You know, it finished. And by the time um, I went back to work in August, I had over 100 paintings. Some I sold, some I mostly give away to friends, some I kept for myself. So my whole house is filled with paintings. Um, I did a, my daughter did her apartment downstairs and then she got married and she left the apartment to my younger daughter. So it's now a dance studio. So that have, I have a whole ballerina collection, about eight or nine ballerinas. And you can see all of this. I have a website as well. My, my elder daughter, she put together a website for me. And it's andreavwalker.com. So feel free uh, um, after the session or during the session to go and take a peek. You will see my story. And you would also see my earlier pieces. But yes, that, that, that is basically my story. I became an artist. I am loving it. I have some pieces that I'm particularly proud of. Some pieces that shouldn't see the light of day, but nevertheless, it's art that is my uh, <laughs> interpretation thereof. And through my journey, you know, I, I was very happy um, with the support I received. Um, I have a niece who is an art teacher. And when I got to like my fourth painting, I was able to send it. I used to confuse her every morning. She would wake up to a new page <laughs> and she had to go through it and critique it and, you know, tell me what's right, what's wrong, which she did. Some of the criticism was nice and loving and some was <laughs> not so nice and loving, <laughs> but it was all good. Then my colleague, um, Alison, she was especially helpful to me because I was at a point during lockdown where I ran out of canvases, I ran out of paints, and you know, this thing driving me to paint and so on. And I was painting on cardstock, cardboard. Um, there was a few books I took off the backs and I paint on them. And when I contacted her, she, she laughed and she said, man, I got a few canvases and a few paints. I can help you, say somebody for them. So that got me going in and then, what she did as well was send me the contact number to um, the art hub, this guy, Jeff, who would deliver. Well, not suffice to say, Jeff was my best friend during quarantine. He was at my house sometimes every week. I won't tell you how much I put out for, for, for those paints because it was at a point in time where my children wanted to hide my debit card and they want to give me give me access to anybody because I was just buying canvases and buying paints and so on. But um the truth is it 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 took me through that period. It was um like a breath of fresh air. It was as if the whole world was just there filled with beautiful things that needed to be painted despite what was going on with COVID and all the you know the cases at that point 
some there, um, I think is in March, April as well. Um, one of my very close friends in New York, she came down with COVID and the painting helped me through that because she was very, very serious. And the good news is that she survived it and she's very well today and she's probably in the, the, um, in the audience right now listening to my presentation. So it was a way of escape um, from the world for me, but into the world. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. So it was uh, to take me from what, what was happening on the day to day. But, you know, in the meantime, I was still trying to capture, you know, animals and, and, and seascapes and landscapes. And, you know, because basically I paint any and everything and I would paint. I love to paint on plywood. I paint on sheet rock, <laughs> you know, almost nothing was safe when I needed to paint. Um, I have a few pieces. It, the earlier pieces I won't share because you can see them on my website, but if I have a few minutes, I can share my screen. I will show you a few of my later pieces. Can you indulge me, um, Tamar? Let's go ahead. Okay. Oh. It says that uh, my, my screen sharing has been disabled. So. And look, while we are with, um, let's walk into sure the thing. Here. screen sharing. Um, but we have heard from all the, the panelists, right? And you have witnessed for yourself, you know, from Mrs. Nelson who came down with an ailment and how it had to, how it impacted her everyday life and how she had to reapply herself um, to, to living with this, right? And, you know, we have heard about from Nurse Sanders and how he has spoken about his first year as a nurse and now will have to be assigned to deal with COVID-19 case. So he is new. And at the same time, the COVID-19 is new, the novel, novel COVID-19, so it's new. So I can only imagine what are some of the things that must have been going through his head, right? Yes, uh, I'm seeing you now. So. Okay, so these are a few of my later pieces. Um, this one was um, my attempt to paint to my former um, parliamentary representative and prime minister, um, the late Owen Arthur. Um, right, those are all KFL blackbirds over the golden stool. Um, I'm not going to show you all, I'm just going to... But I went to the website already and I've requested to, um, to get one of your paintings already. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Um, I'm not sure what's happening, so I won't keep you all back. But yeah. I will upload, upload some more stuff so that if you all, when you all go to the website, you can see my later paintings. I really wanted you all to see the one of Ochieno the Ambo because that is really my pride and joy. I don't know. I, I, are you still seeing my screen? Um, no. Um, okay. but um, can you oh, just give up on that remind us of your of the website again so persons can get to visit your website and right. view of your paintings okay it is andrea v walker one word andrea v walker dot com okay I, yeah, I have gone through it already beautiful Beautiful, beautiful art. Beautiful. I think this is your, your daughter who has placed it in the chat for us. Excellent work. Okay, well, thank her. Thank her very much. <laughs> All right. So, thank you, Andrea. Um, as, it, you, as you have heard, you know, so you see that 2020 has not been all bad, right? You see how it has forced us as human beings, you know, to adapt. You know, um, this pandemic um, has really and truly changed. We had to change our mindset. 
in going forward and dealing with, with, with COVID-19. Um, Miss, Mrs. Nelson, um, can you just, can you tell me or share with us what, what, what has it been like? What was the experience like, you know, returning to work? Um, so you recently recovered from your ailment and COVID-19 is upon you and um, persons were not, as they not following the necessary protocols. What, what are some of the things might have been going through your head? Um, wiping down the door, the knob, everything, I, I, shaking of the hand. Can you just tell me what, what were you feeling? What was it like? Well, I took personally personal responsibility for myself. So I ensure that my that I sanitize my hand, my hands. Plus I took my stuff to work to clean down my surfaces as well as my door so i kind of prepare myself to go back to work when we had covid 19. so i wasn't so much concerned yes i was concerned that some people were not wearing masks but i tried to do the things that are required of me because i know that i am in a very vulnerable situation And my faith in God also helped me because I saw where I was in a situation before, a situation where I couldn't walk and I was able to walk. So I know that I just needed to trust God, not to worry about what was happening around me, just to follow the protocols and I would be okay. Uh, thank you. And um, Nurse Sanders, right? Um, when we hear the stories about COVID-19, right, and the number of infected, the rate in which it has infected persons um, globally, and uh, let's say America, for instance, the death toll there, we are looking at possibly the wipeout of a small country like Jamaica, the death toll from America, right? We are looking at the entire Jamaican population being lost to the COVID-19. Um, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobacco, small countries like ours, right? And you have made mention of, you know, having to venture out, outdoors and you are seeing persons not wearing their mask or just bundled traveling on the public transportation or even at the market what what kind of words would you spread to them um, what kind of advice would you give to, to persons about this virus my advice would be follow the precautions that have been asked of you wear your mask um, be socially distant from persons um, if this the virus is real. It's not a joke. Some persons have been talking about 5G and Jamaica doesn't have a 5G network. There's no 5, we don't even have 4G LTE properly over the entire island. Right? And there are persons thinking all kinds of stuff. And it is, it is real persons are getting ill persons have died, persons are dying, you know, persons are struggling to be alive. Um, so it's not a fake thing, no one is making this up, you know, asking, please wear a mask, um, to sanitize your hand, wash your hand, travel with your hand sanitizers, as I believe uh, many persons and some persons have been doing that, you know, don't don't take it like please. Okay. Right. So you so you see, because um one of the things is that it doesn't affect me. I really don't care. I just want to party. I just want to party. Jamaica is all about party, 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 right? And we like mm -hmm. to have a good vibe. 
But um, I think it would be in our best interest if we could just wait a while um, and see if we can slow the spread of this virus so we can get on with our normal life, quote unquote, because um, I'm not quite sure what our new normal life will be like going forward um, with this new strain coming out. Yeah, the, the thing with, with um, some Jamaicans, you know, the, the ones who are fortunate, um, well, the ones who are not that easily affected would be young persons, persons without underlying symptoms. And those are most of the persons who, as you see, want to party and, you know, up and above. So they may not, that, that category or my category of, of um, persons in my category, age category, would not necessarily have a feel the effect of it as it relates to signs and symptoms. But mm -hmm. there are persons in an in a older category, you know, or who are even not old, but they have underlying symptoms. They may, they may look quite fine. I'm, I'm, I may look quite fine, but not saying that I do, but you can tell that I have an underlying symptom, I mean, condition. Right. And they take it for granted. And that is that is not good. You have young persons who have um, passed away, you know, and you would have never thought that hey, that person would have passed away. You have you have old, you have persons in every area, pregnant, um, you know. So yeah. I think we we need to really sit and um, think within ourselves: uh, do we do we want a country where we can see our, our friends, our family as, as the year goes on, or do we want to let a virus come and wipe us out? And I, I know of one person um, here with us who would not like for this virus to linger um, because as she said, she likes to ball. Right? She's a cry cry teacher sort of a person. And so, Mrs. Harrison, you know, I know that it has been almost, what, two years now since the, the whole classroom has gone online, right? And um, I know even though, because you have mentioned that you had to make adjustments several times to your lesson plans, right? Um, in your opinion, right, do you think that we need to reteach the curriculum or do you think that it is what what is being taught now is it sufficient for for our children all right so uh, in general what i know the ministry of education have done now is that they have reduced for the different subject areas the content um for the syllabus for the curriculum for the school so let's say if we had for this year for grade nine we had 10 topics that's for the grade nine year that they should have covered they have reduced it to maybe about seven or eight. So already you can see where in previous years where certain topics that they would have covered or should have left grade nine knowing this current grade nine would have been, would have completed grade nine knowing less or covered less content, right? Um, I'm not necessarily opposed to that. I'm okay with that in the sense that there are still a lot of disadvantages with the online, um, classes that we're still working or learning how to navigate that and so that is just the best solution at this time but what that does mean is that when we do our however we get in or get back to our normalcy is that we have to make up for those topics that we had dropped down the line because all right so say our grade nine students know they are preparing to go to grade 10 next school year come september of this year actually they are going to start their CSEC syllabus. And so far from, from the CXC office itself, they haven't cut anything. They have gone back to doing the regular number of papers that they would have done in the past. Um, so all of that goes back to normal now. So in our minds, we need to be preparing our exam groups for the exact um, topics, everything that in the, in the syllabus, in their curriculum, in their content that CSEC had given us before, we need to prepare them for that, right? 
but it means that our grade nines you now that has a reduced number of topics that they need to cover for this year, when they get to grade 10, we now need to double up our overburden them, sad to say, when they get into grade 10 to ensure that we are making up back for the topics that they did not cover in grade nine. That's the disadvantage to doing that. I mean, it works, or I believe it works in our favor No, because of how we're trying to ensure that we can manage um, the content or the delivery of the content online now. But the truth is, it's going to affect our students next year, the year after when they're preparing for their CTEC when they get to grade 11. The, right. I'm trying to remember the, fir the first part of the question in relation to, oh, remind me of the first part of the question. If it's about, you have actually answered it because we were, I was just really thinking whether we need to reteach the, the, the curriculum okay. in itself. But, um, but you, have, you have answered it by stating that they have reduced the numbers mm -hmm. that they would have normally taught, teach over the, the period. So from yeah. 10 to 8. So I guess in a sense that um, then that will be sufficient. But you know, I'm still concerned because if CXC has not changed the numbers of topics or exams that they will be mm -hmm. doing, then the children has a lot to catch up on. Right. They are at a disadvantage where that is concerned. And I'm thinking also from, from the CXC board, from their position, they still want to have themselves um, being ranked or rated as a top examination body. So mm. they don't want to put themselves in a position where even though, you know, all the stakeholders will kind of understand based on this pandemic, they don't want to necessarily water down their exam. So at this point, they don't want to make that change. Mm. But the truth is our students are going to feel the pressure of that because you will have the weaker students who are already struggling to finish a curriculum under normal circumstances. And then now they are going to have to while they're at home, while they're doing their online classes, and while they're probably even struggling even more to understand all this content, they are being forced now to still cover all of that content on their own, so to speak, because of this online learning. So really from any way take it, our students are the ones that are going to feel the end of that. I'm sorry, because you, you, you raised an interesting point um, that stood out with me, um, where you said that you had to sometimes discard your lesson plan for the day and, um, and attend to the, the students um, mm -hmm. outside of um, academics. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by that? All right, let me point out by saying that under normal circumstances, teachers, we would do that. So you go into a class and you realize that a student is not responding as how he or she would normally. But the thing is, you would probably continue with your lesson and then maybe after class or after school, draw them away and you know, sort of deal with that issue. Or you might, they might not be feeling well and you send them to the nurse. You know, so in the face-to-face -face platform, there is that issue under normal circumstances in the classroom. But now that it is online, you will realize that sometimes it, you, can't, you can't ignore it. You can't wait until the end. You can't just um, send them to the nurse or send them to the guidance counselor and have that person be with that individual. It somehow you now forces you with the online medium to ensure that everybody is together, is with you. And then there are just so many other different distractors that you might as well just hold off on the lesson plan for a while, try to deal with the issue, try to let everybody be calm because it might, it's, well, from my experience with this online learning, it's always a matter of the, the social aspect of it. Miss, I'm just overwhelmed. Miss, I just need help. I just need somebody to talk to. And then now when you get the, the, the 20 out of them coming together and talking, you actually get more out of them than if I was trying to say, okay, can somebody do question number one for me? And then you just hear silent. So sometimes you have to do that for their social and emotional well-being. But the truth is, it's something or it's issues that I have been faced with face-to-face. With -face. But the truth is, we could have always dealt with it in terms of, okay, you can go to the guidance counselor, you can go to the nurse, or I will speak to you after class. But in the online medium, because 
most of them are the ones that are really feeling lonely and don't have anybody to talk to. Some of them are even at home alone because their parents have gone out to work or the, you know, the bigger siblings have in their own little corner doing their online classes. So sometimes you really just need to stop to do that for their own emotional well-being. Uh, at, at this time, before I, I would say that I wouldn't want to be a teacher, not to, because of the whole stress level that comes with it and the different personality that a teacher would have to have to deal with different students and even more so now um, I must applaud you for the excellent job that you are you are doing. Um, Thank you. And Mr. Fletcher, um, Mr. Fletcher I know you're a superstar you know in the eyes um, touring Europe and um, all these celebrities and doing all these things but as you may mention off earlier um COVID-19 is here to stay right and so for you 2021 what does it bring for you um what what what, what can they what can we look forward to um from you in 2021 seems like we lost Mr. Fletcher all right um so Andrea, I, I, I know I will be receiving a painting from you, um, yes, um, because <laughs> I, I know that the wonderful painting that, that, that has been displayed <laughs> and um, the talent, um, the, because this is something that we have tried to, to promote and in, in our past webinars we have been asking persons you know, to, to engage themselves in extra curriculum and keep the mind active. You know, and so, as you said, you found your talent. You, you, it came back to you um, during COVID, and so, so it will. Will this be now your main responsibility? Will, will, will their children still need to hide their debit and credit card? <laughs> no, it's been paid for itself. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. But a long time ago, definitely. Yes. COVID has been good to me. I, I, I am ashamed to say, but yes. uh, they don't have to hide anything anymore. It has um, paid definitely for itself. And yes. your painting is whenever you want it. You just let me know what you want and we will operate to suit. I, I usually, um, I give each one of my colleagues actually a birthday gift last year. From the time I started to paint, the first one was in May, and I went right down to December the 25th, and then I went back up to the, the ones who would not have been covered by me being an artist. So everyone in my office, I think there are about eight, nine people, everyone received a painting for their birthday last year. So I am very generous. I love to paint. I run up a space to keep them. I don't have any more walls to put them. And who knows? <laughs> we'll hook up and you, you will tell me what you are. I, I, I saw in one of your paintings where you had um, the, the, new, the new faculty. Um, no, no, that's the African Golden School. African, African. That's the Ashanti Henny Golden School. Right, right, right. <laughs> the um, Hillary um, McDonald Building. Because, administrative right. Building. Right, yeah, right. Um, I donated three pieces to the so, office. Sorry? That one. So, so that is the one that I'm asking, I'm requesting um, to have. If people go to still no, that belongs to Cyril. I will have to do a new one for you. Well, okay. Well, we will, we will. <laughs> that is Cyril's painting. I donated that. And um, in that painting is the blackbirds. You know where the cave blackbirds? Right. And I have two others that I donated to the office. I call them Pelican Pride. It's... um. A pelican alongside the clock tower upon the old administrative block. So, yeah. yes, I have my patents all over my office, all over the outside office, in my office, in my boss office. Because I give her, um, I donated for when she came back to work, she was off for a, a year's leave, sabbatical. So, yes. others were looking for a piece, something to give her to welcome her back. So, I donated a piece, and it's a beautiful, I saw you all weren't able to see it because it's one of my best pieces is a beautiful Arabian horse. Just the portrait of it. Website. It's a day for. Beautiful. 
I've been visiting their website, so I'll yes, definitely I will update it. I have been very delinquent. Yeah. Um, ever since I went back to work in August, I have not had the chance to. I've been busy painting. I'm not so much of a website you know, editor and so person right now, even though my main um, job is IT and I do data and so you won't believe it. But when I'm home, it is to get away from all of that and just get the, the canvas and paints and paint. So I will update my website so you can see my, my, my pieces and you will tell me if you still want the golden stool or if you want something else. All right, will do, will do. Thank you. <laughs> yes. right. So um, remember we are open and we are coming down to the closing. And so I'll remind persons if they have any questions um, for the panelists that they can do so just now, All right? Um, on, let me invite um, all the panelists to share, share you know, their last word with us. Um, what, 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 what can we look forward to in 2021? Um, you personally, what, 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 what do you see? Dr. Carr made mention of planning for these things early. And so, you know, what, 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 is, what, what can we look forward to? in 2021 so when next we meet um we will be saying something different so miss nelson um you want to start off with us um what, what what's your word that you would like to leave with us i would like to say remain positive covid 19 seems not to be going anywhere for now and we should just follow the protocols and keep ourselves safe. For me, all that matters is each breath that I take. For me, everything else is fringe benefits. Wow. That's, and that's something that, that we take so much for granted. Um, not knowing, it's, it, we just take things for granted, not knowing that there are persons out there who are just grateful to wake up, you know? Um, so, Nurse Saunders, um, you know, you said that your, your family or relatives are in an other parish. Um, and so for 2021, um, what, what, what's, uh, what, what's happening with you and 2021? What, what's your word that you would like to leave with us for 2021? Stay, stay positive, as Ms. Nelson had mentioned. Um, don't, don't think of Corona as a, a burden, really. Just take your, the necessary precautions. Um, don't, don't take it for granted even though you don't want to take it as a burden, but don't take it for granted that um, you, you're you, you not having any sign or symptom of it. You know, or you know your friend or somebody and they, they look fine. Don't take it for granted that they, they don't have um, COVID-19. Um, for, for me, it's to you know, continue what, what I'm doing, my, my work. Um, continue to do my best in, in the area, um, keep a closer, get a um, much more closer connection with my family as much as possible and keep it up. Um, and just to survive through the year, you know, um, there have been talks of, well, not talks, confirmed um, new, new strain in, in UK. So it's something to, um, something to, to, to be on the minds of persons, you know. It, it may reach here. It does not reach here for as far as we know, um, but it's a possibility. And um, we must still be aware that COVID is, is still here and do our best to not contract and spread, spread it. So we can have a better year, you know. Um, there has been a rise um, in the, I've uh, been a, a significant rise in the delivery online shopping. Um, 
industry and that is something that is good in my view you know you you can order you can do banking all those kind of stuff uh, more efficiently online and it prevents you from going out um for working class persons that can be uh more you know um, convenient for for them and that's a good thing that i have seen in the year 2020 and i believe it will progress i will increase in 2021 thank you very much sir um dr car you have your hand up Oh, Mr. Heron, I'd actually put my hand up some time ago because I thought the musician, I had wanted to ask him a question, um, but he seems to be not on the, um, yeah. Because I, it, the same kind of thing you're asking, um, you know, what are the opportunities for musicians? Can they actually charge for, um, you know, these, these virtual concerts. I think I saw where one um, did charge, but I, I'm not, not sure of what are the opportunities that are there. I, I have that. We seem to have lost um, Dr. Carr just now. Um, but yeah, um, you, that, that, that is something because um, as Mr. Fletcher had said earlier, um, that the music industry has now moved or uh, shifted to online platform where where everything they're doing is now in studio. Um, so that must have been or that must have created a major dent in their livelihood. You know, so um, that would be pretty interesting to hear from him um, about that. And um, Ms. Walker, 2021, 2021. Um, I know here in Barbados, you know, you, you have been doing a fairly good job in keeping COVID at bay. Um, 300 cases over the year, and within a matter of a month or a couple of weeks, it is now uh, twice the amount that you you have had. Um, what, what are, what, what, what are you, what's going through your head now in relation to the widespread of the COVID virus here in Barbados? Well, the first thing I can tell is that I hide in onto my bed with a new, um, puppy that I got there for my birthday, Lily. Yeah. <laughs> this thing is out of hand. You said double, I think we more than double the cases. From yeah. last year, but you know, and and it is rough. And I I think we, if we are not by community spread yet, we are very close to community spread. So I don't know. Um, I guess I will be painting a lot of paintings in the next couple of weeks. I'm on vacation now. I will be until the 16th, but um, I will see how things are when when it's time to go back to work. Right now, my colleagues are working remotely. Um, but we got to keep up, you know, the social distancing and the, um, the mask and so on, because people seem to have forgotten that we were in a pandemic a few months ago, you know, and they've relaxed that and that is why it spread like that. But all you can do is follow the guidelines and hope that the vaccination reaches soon and get rid of this thing. Okay. <laughs> Well, I certainly do hope um, that we'll see the, the end of it um, with the vaccine out. Um, maybe maybe by the end of this year, uh, we should see the curve um, start to flatten. So I do hope that is the case. Um, Dr. Carr, are you back with us? Yes, I seem to be having challenges with my my um, internet and so, which is why I have disabled my video. So, because the bandwidth is very slow here. Yeah. Right, so we're on the, the, the point of wrapping up just now. So any final words you would like to leave with us? 
Okay, just to say thanks to all the presenters. Um, thanks to you and your team for organizing this. It was very, very, very interesting. Um, I think I had questions for, for um, I had jotted down questions for our teacher as well, but I think you asked the question. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at my list here because I had, I had been putting questions down when people were, um, I had wanted to ask uh, Mr. Sanderson um, whether he actually experienced um, any deaths, but we're at the end, so it's, it's okay. Um, but I want to say thanks. This was very, very interesting. And of course, I'm going to be getting a piece of art from Miss Walker. Um, and she's promised to give me a birthday rate since my birthday was just two weeks ago. So I'm looking forward to that. But it was good. And I liked the fact that there is, there is hope um, there is hope from Mrs. Nelson um, because I think she she demonstrated such strength, you know, um, having the challenges that she had. But she demonstrated a lot of strength, and she worked. Her output was was excellent during the time. So we we'll have to give thanks, and there is hope for our our, our students. There is hope for. The, how we approach the pandemic. There is hope that we can find alternative things to do. And art is definitely one. People can write um, poetry. Um, they can make music. Um, you know, there is so much. And for us in the library, we have seen innovation at the highest during the pandemic. We, some of the things that we, we thought we wouldn't have been able to do, um, we did. So we also have some very, very good stories in the, in the library. And so um, we, we just have to give thanks. But as I said at the outset, for us to make the changes that we want, we have to literally write them down and say, this is what I would like to happen. I would like to happen. And I think for the health and wellness team as well, what are the areas that we would want to focus on for, for staff and for the rest of the staff as well. So thank you all. Thanks for everybody who stayed the long haul and thanks to all our presenters. And we look forward to our next um, webinar from the health and wellness team. And we look forward to actually to working again with some of our, our presenters. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Kai. And, um... Uh, let me just extend the, the uh, thank you to again to all the presenters. You know, um, I'm I'm glad that you were, were able to share your story with us and um, and to show that we are still resilient. You know, um, we, we challenges come and they will knock us down, but we don't stay on the ground. Um, we get up and we embrace the challenge and we try our best to make it work and for the Mr. Nurse Sanders, Mrs. Harrison, and Mr. Fletcher, um, who we lost earlier. Uh, it was a great presentation. It was great hearing from you. And um, my final word will be just to stay encouraged. Stay encouraged. Take the necessary um, precautionary measures and just to make sure that we keep checking up on the elders, you know, because we have to remember there are some persons who are single or living alone. And so, you know, it will be very good um, to check on them. And um, I was looking back at one of our past webinars where we were encouraged, as a matter of fact, to make sure that we not just ask how you go and go, right? I hope I got that, that Trinidadian thing correct. But not just to ask persons, how are you doing? But to literally stop for a moment and find out and wait for a reply, you know, because I personally have tried it um, when someone has asked, how are you doing? And I'll deliberately say, not well. And the person will reply, okay, have a great day. You know, so it, it, it means that we are just asking 
because of asking sick. But we need to try to make sure that when we're asking someone, uh, how are you doing? That is out of genuinely, you know, you're genuinely asking the person and you genuinely want to know how is it? Because I can guarantee you that it is really and truly um, a devastating period for some persons. And yes, there are those who have rise above the challenges, but there are those also that are unable to make it on their own. And so once again, I thank you all for staying and thank you for being here and for participating. And I would just like to wish for you a blessed and fruitful 2021 and stay safe, take the necessary precaution and just help to slow the spread of COVID-19. So thank you all for being here again and stay tuned for what we have coming up next. All right, thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Heron, and good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye, Mr. Heron. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Mr. Hassan. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, surprise. You're welcome also.